Hello. Uh, so today we are going to start chapter 15, which is all about sound, and we're going to discuss the very first section, which talks about properties and detection of sound. So we're going to talk about some different properties of sound waves and then how to detect sound, mainly use, uh, talking about the Doppler effect. Okay, so first let's talk about sound waves. Well, sound waves basically are changes in pressure that transmit through matter. So that's what sound is. You need a change in pressure and it has to transmit through some sort of matter. This vibrating source, whatever it is, a uh, string, uh, vibrating reed, your voice, produces regular oscillations in air pressure. Remember, we talked about regular oscillations would be like a standard weight. We produce these oscillations in air pressure. This causes air particles to collide, which then transmits the pressure variations away from the source of sound to, you know, other areas. So like from my voice to the microphone, things like that. With sound waves, we have frequency and wavelength. So the frequency of a wave with a sound wave is the number of oscillations in pressure each second. Remember, frequency is the number of waves per second. For sound wave, it's the number of oscillations in pressure. And wavelength is the distance between successive regions of high or low pressure. So it's like a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough, but this time we're talking pressure. Sound waves are also longitudinal because the motion of particles in air is parallel to the direction of the wave's motion. And so if you remember from chapter, the previous chapter, um, this is a longitudinal wave. Okay, so let's talk about how to find the speed of sound or what it depends on. Speed of sound in air depends on the temperature. Temperature is going to affect that speed. Speed increases by 0 0.6 meters per second for every 1 degree C increase. So that's kind of a good conversion factor. If you have a 10 degree C increase, then you're going to increase by 6 meters per second. In general, at room temperature, sound waves will move at 343 meters per second, and we have other uh, speeds of sound that you can find in a chart in the book that gives you the speed in different mediums, because speed is greater in solids and liquids than it is in gases. Also, a sound uh, wave cannot travel in a vacuum. Remember, we said that it needs to be a variation in pressure in matter. Well, in a vacuum, there is there is no matter, there are no particles that the sound can collide with and cause a pressure change within. All right, echoes also are involved in sound, and these are sound waves that reflect off of hard objects. And so those reflected sound waves are the echoes. The time for an echo to return to the source can be used to find the distance between the source and the reflective object. And we talked about this a little bit in chapter 14. You know, if you have someone shouting and they hear it, they hear their shout 1.5 seconds later, that means it took 0 0.75 seconds to travel from them to whatever the other uh, reflective object was. And we can use that to find distance. Sonar is another good example of using an echo. Uh, bats use this to locate food. If you have like a fish finder on your boat, that uses sonar. So it sends a wave down. If it hits something, it travels back up and then it can tell you what's in the area. Sound waves can also interfere, and this would cause dead spots. So like if you're in a theater, you would not want to be sitting in a dead spot, and theaters are designed specifically to reduce this so that you don't have these things going on. Okay, so we talked about how sound is basically this difference in pressure, and so we need to be able to detect, to detect these pressure waves. So sound detectors convert sound energy, which is the kinetic energy of the air particles moving, to other forms of energy. So, for example, microphones convert sound waves into electrical energy, which can then be converted into other forms, but that's the main use of a microphone. The human ear is a detector that receives those pressure or those sound waves and converts them to electrical impulses that your brain then uses to figure out what the sound is saying or to, you know, figure out words and things like that. Okay, so when you, we talk about the human ear, we're perceiving sound. So... We have a couple of vocab words to talk about when we talk about perceiving sound. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound wave, and it depends on the frequency. Loudness is sound intensity, and sound intensity depends on amplitude. Remember, amplitude is the distance from equilibrium. A sound level is a logarithmic scale that measures amplitude. So remember, it's logarithmic, which means it's not totally going to be linear. We use decibels, which we're going to use as small d, capital B, 
whoops, I don't know what I did there, um, which is a unit of measurement for the sound level. So the sound level depends on the ratio of pressure variation, remember ratio is a division, of a given sound wave to pressure variation of the most faintly heard sound, which occurs at 2 times 10 to the negative fifth pascals. Pascals is a unit of pressure. And so we call this amount of pressure zero decibels. So that's kind of where we're starting. Sound with a pressure amplitude, remember amplitude from the equilibrium, of 2 times 10 to the negative 4 pascals is 10 times larger, and we will call that 20 decibels. If we go 10 times larger than that, then we're at 40 decibels, and we would keep increasing in that manner. Okay, so the last part we're going to discuss is the Doppler effect. This is a change in frequency of sound due to movement. So think about like um, if you have an ambulance behind you and you pull over, it sounds different when it's behind you to when it's next to you to when it's ahead of you. And that's the Doppler effect. Either the source or the detector would be moving in this case or both. So if it was an ambulance and you pulled off to the side of the road, at that point the source would be moving, but the detector or you in the vehicle would not because you pulled off to the side of the road. As the source moves toward the detector, this would be like the ambulance behind you, the wavelength shortens and the frequency increases. As the source moves away from the detector, so this would be the ambulance passing you and going ahead, the wavelength lengthens and the frequency decreases. The only thing that doesn't change is speed. So speed stays the same because we're moving through the same medium, it's just wavelength and frequency that change. Okay, so let's talk about how to calculate the Doppler effect, or how to calculate speed based on the Doppler effect. So for the source and the detector, the frequency of the detector, so D is going to represent the detector in this case, and S is going to represent the source. So the frequency that the detector hears, or that is perceived by the detector, is equal to the frequency of the source times the quantity speed of sound, which is velocity, minus the speed of the detector, divided by the speed of sound minus the speed of the source. And then obviously if one of them wasn't moving, then that speed would become zero. Okay, so we've got F of D is the frequency perceived by detector, F of S is the frequency of the sound wave, F of D is the velocity of the detector, F of F, F of, sorry, V of S is the velocity of the source, and V is the velocity of the sound wave. Positive direction in this case, so whether, remember we're talking velocities, so we also need to indicate direction. Positive direction is from the source to the detector, and that's going to be the positive direction. So if the detector isn't moving, it would be zero, and if it's moving towards the source, oh sorry, toward, sorry, if the source is moving towards the detector, then we would say that's positive. Velocity of sound is always going to be positive, and it's usually going to be the 343 meters per second that's at room temperature. For the source moving toward the detector, or the detector moving toward the source, the force frequency perceived by the detector is going to increase. The opposite, for the source moving away from the detector, or the detector moving away from the source, force per I don't know why I keep saying force. Frequency perceived by the detector decreases. I mean, it is physics. I guess we have lots of force. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples in class, going over the Doppler effect and wavelength and frequency and speed. Okay, so these, these are what we're going to try in class, but feel free to look at them on your own ahead of time. And then this is the homework that you guys are going to be working on, along with the answers, which is also in your outline. Have a good day.